on the banks of the Luangwa River. A gang of four nomadic male lions are staging an invasion. She's this beautiful female, and she's been really, really injured. The wounded females of the Hollywood Pride have fled to the north. Now the nomads are turning south, venturing deep into the territory of the MK Pride. With new cubs to protect, aging MK leaders Axel and Mohawk are barely clinging to power. This is basically the beginning of the end of uh, the punks. The survival of the MK cubs hangs in the balance. They have to keep them away from the nomads because they will be killed. In Zambia's Luangwa Valley, two neighboring prides lay claim to the land. The once powerful MKs, with numbers still rising, and the Hollywood females who must breed to secure their future. Both prides now face the nomads. A wildcard gang of males looking for new territory. Wildlife filmmakers Nathan Pilcher and Sam Davis are in the middle of the action. What's still them? <laughs> They'll witness every triumph and every tragedy. Can these two prides beat the odds and survive the greatest challenge of their lives? This is Thor, leader of the nomads. A brash band of cocky young males on a mission to conquer new territory. This gang of four has staked a claim along the Luangwa River. They're settling in, dining on buffalo. Hundreds of these wanton beasts gather to drink at the river. And the nomads want a piece of this prime hunting ground. In their quest for territory, the aggressive males have left a trail of devastation in their wake. First, they attacked the Hollywoods. Savaging Ava, the pride's matriarch, beautiful female, and she's been really, really injured. But the nomads didn't stick around. They marched south along the river, scouting new lands. They've now left Hollywood territory and are entering land belonging to the MK Pride. Oblivious to the coming threat, the MKs are another two miles farther south in their favorite spot by the river. The pride is huge, now 22 strong with five new cubs. They hold some of the best lion territory in Luangwa. As the dry season continues, prey animals congregate by the river. The pride takes full advantage. It's no surprise that the MKs have made this area the center of their territory, and why the nomads might want to take this land over. Wildlife filmmakers Sam Davis and Nathan Pilcher are following the nomads' rampage through the Luangwa Valley. Since their invasion, the nomads have been calling and scent marking to broadcast their arrival to the MKs. They were last seen at the northern boundary of MK territory, mating with some of the MK females.
So we've literally just come across the four nomads right on the road. They've still got company. Saravi and three of the lionesses from the MK Pride are with them. The lionesses intercepted the nomads as they headed into MK territory and seem to be using their feminine wiles to keep the males at bay. It's thought female lions sometimes pacify aggressive males by simulating being an estrus. It's likely no cubs will result from this. It's possibly just distraction mating. And so far, it's working. It stopped the nomads heading further south. She's been constantly harassed by Thor over there. He's just not letting up and following her and following her. But this clever delay tactic can't last forever. Sarabi and her sisters have been at it for nearly two days, and the ruse appears to be wearing thin. We've been watching the nomads starting to get a bit irritated. The nomads are showing no desire to make this a permanent affair. They're likely after more than just four MK females. Now it's a question of whether these guys stay in this area and try and take it over. While Nathan's occupied with the nomads, to the south, Sam is looking for the leaders of the MK Pride, the punks, Axel and Mohawk. The two aging males have a monumental battle ahead, protecting the MKs against the oncoming nomads. Sam finds Axel on his own. Without his brother, he's vulnerable. He looks really defeated and down. He seems to be soft calling for, for the rest of the MK Pride. It definitely doesn't sound like the, the call of this dominant male who's staking out his territory. As joint leader of the Pride, Axel's role is to sire cubs, help with big kills, and protect the Pride's territory. As a defender, he's on shaky ground. Yeah, it doesn't look too good for Axel. Um, this could be because of the nomads pushing up, but you can see that he's feeling uneasy at the moment. Success or failure often comes down to numbers. Against Axel, the nomads have a four to one advantage. But then. So Mog must have heard Axel calling him. With the arrival of Mohawk, the odds improve. Two powerful leaders united by the bonds of brotherhood. Um, just rolling around on their backs, greeting each other, lots of head rubbing. The bond between males in a coalition is extremely strong, stronger than that between a male and a female line. So, um, yeah, bro brothers for life, really. At nine years old, the punks are past their prime, but the brothers are now fathers again. They've sired five new cubs, cubs whose future depends on the punks holding onto this territory. At dawn, Nathan drives deep into the MK's land looking for these new additions to the Pride. Uh, just some lion tracks coming across the road here, sort of um, heading inland. Uh, I can only see one set. They're not very big, so... I mean, it could be one of the females. It's kind of the direction, roughly, where the cubs are. Um, so it could be one of the mothers. 
The cubs are now about 10 weeks old, but their mothers are still hiding them in thick bush, which makes them tricky to find. It's a huge area that these lions cover, and quite often we just, you know, we hope by chance that they've crossed the road, which is where we're using. And if we manage to pick up their tracks, then we can start to try and get an idea of where they are. But if they haven't crossed the road, literally, I mean, you're looking through this thick bush, and it's just by chance if you haven't had a, a glimpse of them. They could be just behind that bush, and you drive straight past them. That's Heine. Nathan has been tracking lions here for 20 years. There's a lot of things you need to do other than looking for tracks on the road. Is actually listening for alarm calls, um, baboons, um, imp antelopes, impalas. Um, you also get a lot of birds that will alarm call. So sort of obvious signs from the bush uh, of the presence of predators. It's uh, turning into one of those mornings that um, driving everywhere and just can't find anything. By 10.30, it's already over 100 degrees. And most animals are resting in the shade. Looks like lion lying under the tree over there. So two lions, looks like, looks like the mothers but they've got huge bellies, so they've had a good, uh, good meal last night. Producing milk for cubs means the mothers Rosa and Zuri must hunt and drink more often than usual. The mothers can leave their cubs for up to sort of 24 hours uh, hidden in the bush. So it's up to the kind of the cubs' responsibility to stay quiet and hidden, because if they start messing around, playing outside, then they, that's when they get seen. Nathan finds all five cubs hidden under a tree a few hundred yards away. It's quite interesting to watch little personalities developing with these cubs. The one just here with quite spotty legs, he's sort of really active compared to the others. Definitely, definitely a bit of a handful. The little male Spotty mustn't explore too far from his hiding place. It would take just one baboon alarm call to blow his cover. Leopards or hyenas would kill these cubs without hesitation. There's no love lost between these competing predators. And now, with the arrival of the nomads to the north, the cubs face an even greater threat. They have to keep away from the nomads because they will be killed. The mothers must keep the cubs hidden if they're to survive. Not the only ones laying low. To the north, the Hollywood pride has retreated to the far border of its territory. After being attacked by the nomads a few weeks ago, the six lionesses have put as much distance between themselves and the males as possible. They're now far from their normal rich hunting grounds. Bearing the scars of the savage attack, matriarch Ava leads her pride to the river in search of food. It hasn't rained for four months, and for thirsty prey, the river has become one of the last remaining sources of water. But here, 
the hungry Hollywoods face competition from other predators. Huge numbers of crocodiles wait in the shallows for the unwary. And a young hippo calf is the perfect target. Especially when its mother's back is turned. also sense an opportunity for an easy meal. But in the water, it's the crocs who are the top carnivores. The naive hippo calf seems oblivious to the danger. forces of any animal on Earth. Once their jaws clamp down, there's no escaping. There's nothing the mother can do but follow in vain. two young females is tempted to try and steal the kill. She's hungry, but it's a rookie mistake. Entering crocodile-infested waters is not a risk worth taking. The Hollywoods are stuck on the sidelines. Still hungry, they head away from the river to search elsewhere. A few miles downstream, in the game-rich heart of MK territory, the story is very different. Nathan has tracked down the pride by the river. Some of the MK lionesses have brought down a buffalo. Axel and Mohawk arrive just in time to share the spoils. Eleven of the MKs are here and have eaten well. And although the numbers look impressive, that's only half the pride. Missing are Sarabi and the three females who are still engaged with the nomads, while Rosa and Zuri remain hidden with their cubs. We were only about probably half a mile as the crow flies to the cubs and the mothers. Even though the cubs have yet to meet their fathers, their survival depends on them. I think Mohawk could be a fantastic role model when it comes to the cubs. Mohawk has sired many cubs in his short reign with his brother. The younger members of this pride are about two and a half, and we watched them growing up. You know, we saw them when they were little cubs. But even at two years old, teenagers like Kimba still need protection. Kimba has always had a great relationship with Mohawk. Adult males can be intolerant of cubs, especially around a kill. But Mohawk happily shared his food with the young Kimba. Less than half of lion cubs make it to adulthood at around three years old. Kimba may still not beat the odds. If the nomads try to take over the MK pride, they'll attack him as his future competition. So Kimba must stay vigilant.
While the punks keep a watchful eye over most of the MK Pride, Sarabi and three other MK females are still occupying the nomads, just a couple of miles to the north. Meanwhile, the Hollywood Pride was last seen hunting by the river in the far reaches of its territory. It's dawn, and Sam is out looking for the six lionesses. Before she can find them, she spots another predator the Hollywoods have to compete with. It's a big cat, but not a lion. This is Chipazua, a leopard she knows well. She's been in this area four or five years now. She's a young female, and she's just known for being really cheeky, uh, quite lazy and relaxed. Chip has a reputation for stealing other animals' kills. You can see she's almost looking around frantically because she can smell the blood and the leftovers from Impala. Chibazura is enjoying another meal that she hasn't caught herself. <laughs> Scavenging this kill was a calculated risk, but Chip needs to eat quickly. The longer she takes, the more animals will alarm call at her presence. can never rest easy. Looks like she's seen something. This lion's coming. What are the odds? Chip bids a hasty retreat. It looks like it might be Ava from the Hollywoods. Ava wastes no time in tracking down the source of the tempting smell. I really hope that Chip has left and she's gone further enough into the bushes because she can't get this kill back. Here come the rest of the Hollywoods. The pride is ravenous and it's every lioness for herself. Lions can eat an incredible amount in one sitting, almost a quarter of their own body weight. So this leftover impala is really nothing for these lions. Ava has done well to find food for her pride. But third hand, it's little more than a snack. They need to hunt soon. Although things are hard for the Hollywoods, at least up here, they don't have the nomads to deal with. At the end of what's already been a long day, Sam travels south into MK territory, where the nomads remain a grave threat to the punks and their cubs. Just over the border, she spots some of the MK pride. So we've just come across four of the MK females. It's Sarabi and the other lionesses who have spent the last three days mating with the nomads. Seems that they are looking quite skinny, so they haven't had an opportunity to feed for a while. Now they're heading south towards the rest of the MK Pride. But they're tired. They've done all they can to keep the nomads at bay but the distraction couldn't last forever. So far, they've done their job really, really well. Now that the mating is over, will the nomads head further south towards where the MK Pride have been, have been hanging out? And does that mean that they will find the cubs? Trouble could be brewing for the punks, Axel and Mohawk. Right now, Sam and Nathan have no idea where the nomads are. morning, urgent roars draw Nathan deep into MK territory. He 
he finds Mohawks staring upstream to the north. In the distance, lions are fleeing toward him. There's one, two lions running, three lions, four lions, five lions running. And now I can just see the MKs running along the beach as well, away from that direction, looking, looking behind them as well. So yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some other lions around. Axel arrives, but there's none of the usual greeting between these two brothers. Something is very wrong. The males are literally sprinting away. I'm sure the females are going to turn up any second now. Here they come. They're spooked. Soft calling to reassure each other. This is certainly the first time I've come across pride all looking behind them and uh, running away. I think it's other lions, but I can't see what's in the distance over there. Whatever it is, the punks have chosen to flee, not stand and fight. There's only one thing that's likely to cause such a reaction. For these guys' sakes, you know, we hope it's not the nomads, but uh, they're suddenly looking quite worried and being quite cautious. Usually, the MK lionesses will attack outsiders without hesitation. It would take a powerful force to send them into retreat. And the two punks absolutely disappeared. I mean, they're just, they're not stopping. Nathan heads back upriver to investigate the source of the problem. These are two males, three males. It looks like the nomads. The nomads are moving relentlessly south toward the MKs. This is really bad news for the, uh, the MKs because I never thought they'd come this far down. It's what everyone feared. The nomads have invaded the MK's land and will attempt to take over the pride. A bend in the river is all that separates the MKs and the nomads. So you can still see the, um, the MK females all sitting in the distance watching these uh, nomads. The nomads have come all the way down into the very bottom end of the uh, MK's territory. And uh, if they say this is basically the beginning of the end of uh, the punks, the lionesses can't watch the approaching nomads for long. They must keep moving. Hot on the heels of their males, the punks. These, these MKs and the punks are constantly on the move, and the, uh, the nomads are following in pursuit. And we've got Kimber and his brothers. These huge males are heading their way. They're going to have to keep out, and they're going to keep moving. Hopefully not get caught, because they would get killed. are closing in. Kimba needs to move now. Thor, the most dominant nomad, leads the charge. ahead and catches up with Axel and Mohawk, still fleeing. They've clearly realized that a fight with the nomads is one they can't win. But in their retreat, they've led the nomads to the worst possible place. The crazy thing is, is that these lions have all moved away from the nomads directly to where the cubs are hidden. The world of the MK Pride is about to turn upside down. So the nomads are actually really, really close and chasing the, uh, the MKs down. I think particularly the young boys at the moment. So 
I mean, they're really going for it. They're running. So we're trying to keep up and get to the other side of this woodland and see, uh, see if we can see what's happening. Suddenly, Mohawk emerges from the bushes. Titus, the biggest of the nomads, is close behind. He's calling for the other nomads to join his pursuit of Mohawk. The punks flee deep into dense bush, and Nathan can follow no more. of the chase, the MK Pride has scattered. Their protectors, the punks, are nowhere to be found. A few of the teenagers are down by the river. Others are hiding in thick bush. Kimber is missing. I'm not sure what the outcome's gonna be, um, but it doesn't look good. For, for the Sprite or the punks. The nomads are now in the center of MK territory, less than a mile from the cubs and their mothers, Rosa and Zuri. They've stayed hidden, but if the invading males find them, they'll have no chance. The only hope for the cubs at the moment is if the mothers actually lead them away from the nomads and, and raise them on their own. Um, they have to keep them away from the nomads because they will be killed. Nathan's been filming this pride for 12 years. This moment brings mixed emotions. I've been in the bush for years and I've always wanted to see a pride takeover. Uh, so in, in, in some respect, it's an amazing event to see, but I mean, it's really quite sad actually to see the pride falling apart and, and the possible takeover and the chance that these cubs might be killed. And, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, there's, you know, the interesting side, but there's the really sad side to it as well. the MK split up into small groups. Finding them in the dark is an almost impossible task. Nathan returns to camp. Roars wake him an hour and a half before sunrise. He's back on the trail. Quite a lot of uh, relaxed impala and pukus here, so uh, I don't think the lions have passed through here, otherwise there'd be alarm calling. Might just stop here and listen, see if we can pinpoint their location. Lion roars can travel more than five miles, so the MKs could be anywhere. But as dawn breaks, Nathan can use other bush skills to find them. Come across uh, lion tracks going across the road. Um, I think probably the nomads from roughly the area we left, left from yesterday evening towards the river. It's not the lions he was after, but other signs look a little more promising. A load of tracks just here coming back the opposite direction. Yeah. Two, three, four. There's quite big ones as well, so I expect possibly um, the punks and uh, a couple of the NKs as well heading in this direction, which is kind of more their territory. The mixed size of prints suggests males and females, which rules out the nomads. The tracks lead Nathan to the river. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
looks like the MKs, at least. I'm not sure if the punks are with them. They're quite far on the on the on the bend of the river up there. The MKs seem to have evaded the nomads and regrouped at exactly the place where the chase began. So it looks like pretty much the whole MK Pride. There's Sarabi. There's Kimba. Kimba survived, but the punks are nowhere to be seen. Still looking out, a little bit alert. But Axel and Mohawk are not here. Kimba and his brothers still need their father's protection. He's probably got some of the most reason to be alert because if the nomads come in, he will be the one that's targeted. And if he manages to keep away from their teeth, he'll be kicked out. The pride is on edge. This one female's got up and she's coming along. She's looking a little intently. I just lower my voice. Despite tensions running high, there's no sign of the nomads. The heat of the day drives the MKs into the shade. Nathan goes searching for the punks. If Kimber, the other male teenagers, and the five cubs are to survive the nomads' invasion, Axel and Mohawk must return to take back control. But they have disappeared. It's dusk when Nathan returns to the riverbank. This time, the whole MK Pride is there. Axel and Mohawk have, uh, have turned up. Everyone's looking really quite calm and relaxed. Kimba is especially pleased to see the return of his protectors. During the night, Axel and Mohawk drew the nomads far to the south, away from the main pride. Now the punks have returned to defend the family once more. Perhaps running away wasn't entirely about self-preservation. Maybe it was a clever strategy by two wise old males. And the pride shows its appreciation. This is quite funny, actually, that um, Axel never gets any attention. But today, they're, they're so happy to see him, they're kind of rubbing up against him, rubbing their bums in his face, you know, which is kind of like a, quite a, an honor. The whole pride is united around the punks. Even Rosa and Zuri, the mothers of the cubs, are here. But the cubs aren't with them. For Nathan, this is a reason for concern. Without having actually seen the cubs, we don't know if they are alive or not. The nomads we know are actually not that far away from here. The threat from the nomads is far from over. Ten miles to the north, the Hollywoods have been enjoying some relative peace. But the pride has been living off scraps. Under the cover of night, Ava has a chance to fill their empty bellies. This is her time. Now she can see the prey better than they can see her. A reflective layer behind her super-sensitive retina bounces light back through her eyes, amplifying the brightness of the animal she stalks. Ava sees movement ahead. A group of puku. Ava 
Ava locks onto a male, away from his herd. The rest of the pride fans out. arrive. Finally, the females are back on top. Life for the Hollywoods is returning to normal. But for the MKs to the south, things are very much in flux. Nathan is desperate to find the five MK cubs. It's a couple of days now since the nomads came in and chased all the uh, MKs and the punks all over the place. Obviously, the constant worry is the cubs, whether they're alive or dead. He finds Rosa sleeping under a bush. One. Two. Three. Her cubs are all alive. It's a miracle, actually, because the nomads chased the MKs and the, uh, the punks right through the area where the cubs were hidden. Zuri is here, too. But her cubs are not. We can only see three of the cubs here, so there are two missing, the two younger ones. There is a strong possibility they might not have made it. The nomads may have claimed their first victims. One thing is certain. They've not left MK territory. They're less than a mile away. They're feeding on the buffalo the MKs killed a few days earlier, but never got the chance to finish. Thor and his brother pick up the scent left by the MK females. may have been outsmarted once, but they haven't been defeated. The punk's troubles are far from over. To keep hold of the MK pride, Axel and Mohawk must draw on all their years of experience, because a whole heap of trouble is coming their way. <laughs> 